Well, the social media landscape changes all the time, and that is true this year in 2024. In this conversation, we're going to unpack some of the tips and trends that we see working best on social media right now. Let's do this. Well, hey guys, I'm Thomas. And I'm Ian. And today we are talking about church social media trends that you need to know right now. We're going to unpack five of the things that we're seeing get churches the best results on social media right now. Um, yeah. So yeah, the thing about this is we have to do this episode just about every year. We did it last year. We did it yeah. the year before because these things are radically different. The things that we talked about in 2022 are totally different from the things that we're talking about now. Um, yeah. In 2022, we were just at the beginning of uh, the vertical video revolution, right. the uh, upswing of TikTok and some of those things. And so now uh, things have really changed quite a bit. So I think it's something good for us to revisit. Yeah, agreed. And and trends can change quickly for uh, things doing things online, and particularly with social media. There are some tried and truths uh, that, that remain uh, that we may cover, but you're right. Uh, these are the ones right now that it's, uh, I think it'll be good for churches to just uh, take a quick uh, temperature check on what they're doing with social media and if they can implement any of these. Yeah. Well, at my uh, church, um, I, Kay, I'm, I'm the executive pastor at my church, and we just uh, are really taking a deep dive right now. And our social media director, uh, I think this is stuff that all the stuff that we're talking about, like right yeah. now, of uh, the things we're doing and what we're doing to see gains. And a lot of these things we've actually immediately seen gains with. Uh, wow. So um, it's been really uh, cool to see some of that. So, awesome. all right, I'll kick us off with the first one. Um, this is a. No brainer. If you get anything out of this episode, um, the the main thing is short form video content. Um, yep. That is that's what's working right now. Um, this uh, when we talk about this, we mean specifically four primary channels of putting content on YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels. Those yeah. those four channels. Yep. Um, while you're at it, I mean, I, we've we've been testing things on. LinkedIn and on Twitter yeah. and using some of that same content there, it probably won't hurt you. Right. Uh, but those four channels, uh, short form content is still going gangbusters. Uh, it is still the primary thing where it's uh, it really is producing about 10x the results of any other kind of post that we're doing right now. Yeah. Uh, so um, for that, uh, churches have a few options. The easiest thing, and I guess where churches really have a leg up, uh, is that we are usually producing long form video content every week. And so it's not that hard to turn that, I mean, relatively speaking, it's not that yeah. hard to turn that into short form video content, especially with some of the AI tools that are available now. Um, I know that there's a a uh, non-church specific one called Opus Clip. Uh, mm. There's another one called Sermon.Tech uh, and a few other, I've heard of like Sermon Shots and some of these other yeah. companies out there that will turn your weekly sermons into multiple short form pieces of video uh, that are basically ready. Now, yep. is that as good as what a um, a professional video editor can do? No. We don't use it here at Retrite. We just can't quite get the quality that our we have people on staff here that do video editing, so it makes sense for us to, you know, go the route that we've always done with that. But it's getting closer <laughs> and closer, I will say. Uh, yeah. the AI, the thing about it is it gets smarter all the time. But uh, big picture is that there's really no excuse. You need to be producing um, video content. Short form video content yep. is the way to go. Um, beyond your sermon content, making other short form videos. Um, I think this is really uh, so important right now. Yeah, it hasn't shown any signs of uh, going away as a trend. And uh, like you said at the beginning, if there was only one thing you can do, this is really where it's at right now. That's why we're talking yep. about it uh, first. And uh, and there's a reason why, I, I mean, I find myself watching, I don't know how many shorts, uh, you know, in a you given day. You get sucked day. into it, don't you? You like do. If I it, get just, it just one happens. Of them, it just oh happens. goodness. <laughs> it it's, does. The, yeah. So I, I'm a, uh, what, you're mostly on Facebook YouTube. or Instagram or where do you watch well, them? Well, no, I, I'm mostly on, well, I watch more shorts on YouTube, but, uh, but I, uh, on Facebook, I watch the reels and then I pop over to Instagram, but I'd say I'm, I'm uh, what I'm, I'm the old, the old, uh, social media channel guy, uh, Facebook mostly. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, some 
stats that we're seeing more and more of is that YouTube is the audience. It's the platform of choice for the youngest viewers. Yeah. Uh, so, and I think that's mostly tied to the fact that parents let kids watch YouTube and right. they got pulled into shorts and they're not allowed to use yeah. TikTok or Instagram. Right. So that's kind yeah. of, they've, they've cornered that market with, they YouTube started on YouTube early. Things. That's true. My kids right. did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so that's but, the one that a lot of the, um, the ones after Gen Z, and we haven't named them yet, I guess, maybe Alpha or something like that. But yeah. that's what they use. Gen Z is more on TikTok, and uh, millennials are on Instagram, and you old fogies in uh, in Gen X, <laughs> uh, you guys are mostly on Facebook. Still, that's I you guess, too. So. But yes. So anyway, but <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, we're uh, we're young Gen Xers, okay, for the record. So anyway, next one: live streaming and virtual services. So we kind of, you know take a step back on this one we often don't recommend live streaming for most churches unless you know it is pulled off extremely well and high quality this can often hurt you more than help you um, if you're not um, in a good place to do this so however it's worth mentioning because it is it's been a tried and true thing and it's been something that obviously has increased exponentially since the pandemic um mm-hmm. don't even like mentioning the pandemic anymore it was so long ago i guess it feels like but the pandemic did kind of really make this a, an, an ongoing trend and it uh churches have continued to do this more than ever before now so and i guess what we would say is in, encourage here is to use high quality cameras make sure your um your sound equipment's good you have good visuals and you have a good yeah. good lighting and set up because again if it's not done well um then uh it can often hurt you and there's a lot of churches too that i've seen and that i talk to on a daily basis that they you know most churches that i talk to and i talk to many as you know uh on a daily basis they are doing live streaming at least on facebook live or youtube uh for their church services is that true you you find that most of the churches you're talking to are doing live streaming yeah 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 absolutely now not doing it well uh, but <laughs> sure, doing right. it, uh, doing yeah, that's, it, uh, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. And, and so, uh, where we try to consult churches to, to do it well, but at the same time, again, uh, it's something that if you can do it well, it makes sense. Uh, you know, people are watching messages online on social media. Um, so I find myself speaking of being the old fogey on Facebook. If I am, didn't make it to church, I find myself watching, even though I can do this on my church's website or another air or youtube i find myself watching on facebook live um so and, but uh, and yeah. you find yourself often watching it live you're saying yeah like you find yourself doing that or you find yourself watching the recorded live, live. video typically live oh, okay uh yeah so and again that's from the if, ballpark uh, or wherever you are for some uh, reason like yeah like if it. my son has a baseball tournament and i know i'm not going to be there i can go on i know when the services that we normally go to so that's just me but yeah and yeah again, so, yeah, yeah, super interesting. Um, yeah. So I, a couple things I'll say about this. Uh, first of all, um, we did a whole video um, that explains it, like a deep dive as to, and the title of it is it, why most churches should not be live streaming. So we, I, I stand by that. I still yep. feel that's the case. Um, that's not to say that live streaming isn't a trend. Uh, right. That is a trend that we're seeing. And I think for the right kind of church, um, it does make a lot of sense. Yep. Um, I think that the the challenge with live streaming is that you need a a large enough audience that you hit critical mass. Uh, yeah. Because I think the the issue is that so many churches they try this uh, only to find out that you'll have sporadically like a person hop on yeah. and then they'll hop off. And I mean, this is what the vast majority of live streams look like: is people watching for a few seconds not fully engaged because they didn't really, if you stumble upon it in social media, you're probably not looking for it, right? You're just kind of scrolling through your feed and up up pops, up pops your church's (laughs) uh, live stream. uh, And then, you know, you weren't like ready to dig into a time of worship or a sermon. So um, I would say that the place of potential for churches uh, is with non-service live streams. Uh, So, uh, doing a live stream of uh, maybe like a Q and A time um, with uh, with your pastor, or um, a live stream of 
uh, a prayer time, like a daily prayer where a pastor will pray for 15 minutes, um, maybe once a week or something, and just people can type in prayer requests and they can experience that. So there is maybe some room for that. But again, the big rub is that you need a certain critical mass to make it make sense. Like even for us here at Retrite. So we're considering doing some live content right now. I've been talking with our video team about some of that, maybe doing a live webinars or live site reviews or some of those yeah. kinds of things. Uh, and you know our concern, and why we haven't jumped to that yet, is that you know we feel like if it's if we if we don't have enough of a following, it's hard to kind of make it worthwhile. Yeah. Once you get to a few dozen people watching a stream at any given time, well, then it starts to make sense, and you've built critical mass, and so yeah. that's kind of the rub, I think, on those things there. So yeah, it's um, good. I I'd say possibly for non sermon content or non like church service content. Uh, but for the vast majority of uh, churches, I still in, I still encourage you to think twice and really count the cost before you do yeah. it. Uh, if you haven't seen that video of ours, I'll leave a link down in the description. Or if you're watching on YouTube, I'll have a link for you up here where you can uh, yep. click on that and see that our breakdown as to why you probably shouldn't be doing that in most cases. That's good. Cool. All right. Next one is authentic and relatable content. Uh, so I think this is something that... Uh, what we're saying by this is the trend I'm seeing is that you don't need to have this ultra produced content yeah. for it to be seen as valuable anymore. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of the platforms, especially platforms like TikTok, they reward content that feels like it was shot on a front facing iPhone yeah. with no microphone. And really, yeah. I, I don't see any penalty that we're seeing by not having really nicely produced content on that platform. Uh, so even some of the viral dance videos that you see out yeah. there, they'll have music put into them that's really crisp, but there's not other microphones or things. It's just shot on an iPhone. It's shot yeah. on something that you have in the pocket of your, in your pocket there. So um, I think authentic, relatable content, this should be welcome and good news for us as churches is yeah. that the main thing is that you're making content and it's more important to think about what you say and what the the story behind the content and what the hook is of that content yep. as opposed to like the production value of the content and the amount of time and energy you spend on you know high-end lighting and cameras yeah. and microphones and all those things. So good news for smaller churches. You don't need a big budget to do this. Yeah, no, that's good. That's well said. And I think just, again, pe people appreciate authenticity. When you get too uh, production-y and everything's got to be big and, and uh, you know, under the lights or just, you know, standardized, whatever other terms we want to use it, it can come off as unauthentic. So uh, I like it. So, and mm -hmm. nothing more to add there, Thomas. So, but um, yeah, so next one, community engagement and interaction. We can't forget, because I think we think a lot of uh, churches think, a lot of times, as they should, uh, with social media about outreach um, and uh, and just putting things out there, not just for their members, but we got to remember that social media is still social media. It's about yep. community engagement and those that are following you, those that are your friends, those that are uh, already tied to you there, that's who you want to be concerned about. So you want, can't yeah. forget that it still is a really good tool for church communication, if we want to put it that way. So uh, whether or not that's, uh, you know, doing Q and A's and, you know, uh, polls and uh, just prompting discussion and um, all of that, um, that's, that's something that, you know, churches need to, I think sometimes be reminded of um, and uh, is that that's where your people are following you. And remember, that's a place to stay engaged with them. Yeah. So we've been doing a lot of experimenting right now with uh, with polls. Um, I see that we, our social media team here at ReachRight, uh, we are putting out, I'd say probably four polls a week uh, on our social platforms. Um, a lot of uh, like Facebook, Instagram, some of these channels have put in new polling tools uh, so you can ask people and it's just a really good way to get engagement. Like I think yeah. that if it, it, you know, don't just use it as engagement bait, uh, but you want to use it to like about things that it doesn't have to be something you're actually wanting to, you know, survey your church about. Don't think of polls that way. Like, should we move service time from 930 to 10? That's not what we're talking about with this here. It's just good for you to kind of build engagement and get the pulse of what people are like. And there's nothing wrong at the same time with making polls about simple things like, um, 
you know, I just what what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? You know, right, those yeah. kinds of <laughs> those kinds of questions. Yeah, uh, they are really they're good. And even if you find ways to get people to disagree in polls, um, not about things that really matter, but you know, farming for some of that kind of disagreement, I think there's a really op a good opportunity there. So what we're doing is when we're doing a reel or a um, or a YouTube short or something like that, we'll usually do c polls that go along with it. And we've been testing this over the last three months. At first, we were seeing, you know, 10 responses to a typical poll. Now we might see 75 or 100 responses on a poll that we put yeah. out there. And so it really is engagement and trying to build some connection with people. I think churches need to get into this some more. I think it's a really big opportunity that we have. Um, and then I'll say this, and we say this quite a bit on the podcast, is that it is social, and so you need to be social. And I would make it a rule within your organization that anybody who leaves a comment, they will get a response from us no matter what the comment is, unless it's profane right. or trying to take you off track. Like, so if someone comes on and, you know, drops F bombs and stuff, just delete it. That's the solution to that. But if someone yeah. is asking a genuine <laughs> question or they even express some disagreement with your sermon, let's say you put your sermon onto YouTube and someone says, Hey, I don't agree with what you're teaching here about, um, about the Holy spirit and speaking in tongues, for instance. Um, let's say sure, someone sure. says that have a conversation. Don't just delete it and say, well, they right. disagree. So get out of here. Have, have yeah. conversations on that. But the worst that you can do is leave things unresponded to. Uh, right. So even if it's just a great message that someone comments, you know, leave an emoji back or say, hey, thanks yeah. so much, or have some kind of comment. This builds traction and it helps you to gain momentum on these things. That's good. That's good. Last cool. but not least. All right. Last one is collaboration and partnerships. I think this is a trend that I am seeing more and more opportunities for churches in. Um, you know, I know that influencers use right. this idea of collabs, and sometimes we get caught up and, well, you know, I don't have, uh, we don't have thousands of followers at our church. We're a small church. I, I would make a point of every time you're doing anything, partnering with any kind of an organization in your community, whether it's a local homeless mission or a school that you're partnering with or whatever the organization is, if you guys have a similar or some kind of a part of your mission overlaps, use it as a chance to collaborate on social. Chances yep. are um, your if it's a local school and maybe uh, you are doing a... Um, you're working with the PTA Association, for instance. Chances are the PTA has a Facebook or an Instagram yeah. account where they highlight pictures of things. Do a collaboration there. Do a shared thing. Tag them uh, in posts that you do when they've when you acknowledge good work that they've done. And yeah, hopefully you'll get some reciprocal kind of interaction with those kinds of things. So I think this is something that we we think um, that sometimes this is something that the really big uh, influencers will use. You know, right. so if I can't get. Um, a major name uh, to kind of collaborate with. There's no point in doing it. But in the end, the major names in your community are things like your P your PTA organizations right. and other local churches and your homeless mission that's there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the you know laundry love ministry that serves your community right. there. Find ways to do partnerships with those things, and I think you'll you'll see more interaction and more connection on your accounts. Well, and after all, most churches, not all, but uh, are looking to reach people locally. So you're right. Yep. It doesn't have to be some big external uh, faraway source. And so, yeah, that's uh, that's good stuff, Thomas. Cool. Anything to add as we wrap up, Ian? No, we hope uh, this gave at least one extra idea. Uh, like we said at the very beginning, if there was only one to start uh, carrying out at your church, we recommend the shorts big time. Get on yep. that. Uh, we can help with that. If anyone asks questions, let us know for sure. But uh, but yeah, no, it's, this is uh, good stuff. Awesome. Yeah, it's good. Hopefully it's helpful to you guys. If it has been, uh, leave us a comment down below. If you have a question about maybe something you're doing on social media or something that you can't seem to get results with, we'd be happy to answer anything you have down there. We still follow that policy here at ReachRight where every comment uh, that is left, we will get you a response unless you start right. using obscenities, in which case we'll delete it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but... Thanks, guys, for being a part of the Retrite family, and we'll see you next time. See you.